Welcome to NBL Overtime. The off-season continues and the free agents list is still, well, a few people on it, but it is narrowing. We now have Nathan Sobey as a Brisbane Bullet. Majuk Deng has head to the Cairns Taipans and Clinton Steindl has stayed at the Perth Wildcats to try and go and get himself another championship ring. My name's Cameron Luke. Kerry Homicide Williams is here with me. Liam Santa Maria as we get into what has been... <laughs> A couple of weeks. Hello, Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Cam? I missed you, man. You uh, all right? You, you guys went okay last week without me? Well, yeah. we just kept our head above water, but uh, you, you got the giggles. I know you have. You, you, right? know, you know what? I was that sick last week. I was uh, hallucinating at some point. You know what? I, I, I had this idea that came to me last week. Uh-oh. Oh, my you God. You and your ideas. <laughs> Chain there to the Boxing Day game. With the roof open. We have a barbecue we've on the side. The oh, we've man. been here. Yeah, we've been here. Okay, yeah. let's yeah. get to the serious. Hey, how you doing, mate? You well? Yeah, good. good. Great job last week. Obviously, Ty Wesley was the big talking mm -hmm. point last week. This week, it is Nathan Sobey, who has left the Adelaide 36ers and signed a three-year deal at the Brisbane Bullets. Mm. Big news, of course, after a big year that he had, his best NBL career, a year, All-NBL second team, and now he'll play under the national coach. Yeah, I mean, there's a few kind of interesting elements to it, right? Obviously, as um, was rumoured, he was very, very close to going to the South East mm. Melbourne Phoenix. Very close. Mm -hmm. Came down to those two teams. Obviously, there are other clubs that were interested, but that's what it came down to. And um, he chose the Bullets. He signed a three-year deal. And what I think is kind of interesting about it is, I mean, he's going to play point guard mm. there, right? So he played point guard for Adelaide, and that was an interesting experiment. It worked in some in some ways and not in others. But he's going to play point guard for the Bullets. They're going to start him and Cameron Clitton. They're going to bring Jason Kadee off the bench. And um, that's, that's what he wants to do. And obviously, as we said, the uh, World Cup coming up later this year, the Olympics next year being playing right there under the Boomers coach. That's all a big part of it. There's some spots open too on that Boomers team. Of course, Dante Exum. And of course, we've got to see how it plays out from their NBA franchise. But Dante Exum injured again in recent patella surgery. So probably you'd think diminish the chance of him playing for the Boomers in the off-season. Who knows about Aaron Baines, who has struggled at different times with injuries, so the Boston Celtics might come over the top. So there's going to be some spots there for some NBL guys, but the quizzical look on my side is that you don't believe me. OK. Thank you. <laughs> Do you believe this move is a good move for Nathan Sobey and why? For NBL purposes or because you believe he did this for national team purposes. Because all his career, pretty much, when he's blossomed, he's played up-tempo style of play. Mm -hmm. Would you consider him a half-court player? No. no. Why is this going to work for the Bullets? So we can't, we know then he's not a half-court player. Lamana's style of play is not free-flowing, running gun. So we know he can't possibly be going there for the boom, for, for NBL purposes. Mm -hmm. So if the national team purposes is why he went, if all the NBA players with, that are Australian sign up and say, we're in, where is he going to fit? If they're all playing, he's not on the team. No, he's not. All right, then. So but, now but, but, but. he went for boomers, and if they're all playing, he's not on the no, team. But. Let's just say his position. But hang on a second. But hang on a second. Go you, ahead. You're right. His career has been as a more free-flowing player in the NBL, no doubt. Maybe now he has seen a little bit of a difference where he's like, my best opportunity to make the Boomers team is one. Now, just because you play under Andre Lamont doesn't mean you're automatically going to make the team. But the best way to play a style which is going to get you national chances is to learn the style of the Australian coach, which is the way he plays in the NBL and in the Australian Boomers. So Nathan Sobey might have thought to himself, hey, you know what? Best thing for my career, both as a national boomers player and in the NBL, is to learn a little bit more and play point guard in a different style to the way I've been involved in the last five or six years. See, I think there is an I think there's an element of him at Brisbane in that offensive system that can work. And I'll tell you why. Where Sobi is at his best is in the first half of the shot clock. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's catching it in transition, getting that kick ahead pass or ripping it off the board and pushing it and making plays, right? And, you know, using his jets. Where he struggled last season was late in possessions, where the ball would come back to him. He'd have to make decisions late in the shot clock, work off the pick and roll, off the dribble, and he found that a little bit difficult. And that hurt Adelaide. I think if Brisbane have... If they are able to re-sign Lamar Patterson... Mm. He is their late-in-the-shot-clock guy. So Lamanis would be saying, yes, you're going to play point guard. What that means is you're going to get the first catch. 
and we want you to explore in transition. And then once the ball reverses, hey, we're gonna run some stuff for you, we're gonna throw it up. Late in the shot clock, you're not gonna have that pressure. We have a guy who can do that, who can close possessions and who can close games and we're gonna make it work. Keeping in mind as well, Lyndon, if they get Lamar Patterson back, Bairstow is still a free agent, hasn't re-signed yet at the Brisbane Bullets, and the longer this goes, you would expect mm. that maybe he's going to look somewhere else. Hodgson likes to get up and down the floor as well as a five guard. They might. Now, I'm not saying they're going to overhaul the entire way they play their basketball, but we might see a slightly more up-tempo Brisbane Bullets into the new season if the personnel, in fact, dictates yeah. towards it. Well, he, Lomanis did open up his system a little bit this yeah. last year and played a little bit more up-tempo. Just quick, I know you want to jump in, but on that best bit, mm. Where are we? I think the longer it goes, the more likely he returns. Okay. Because the longer it goes means he's not really he's getting not the offer yeah, right. out yeah, there that right. he wants. And that was the idea. We're not going to take up the option on what it says at the moment. Go and explore. Same with what Melbourne United is doing with Craig Moller. Mm -hmm. Go and explore, see what you can get. And if you're happy to come back for this... Let's do it. Are you surprised that he hasn't had a great deal of nibbles outside of it? Because I thought he had a really good year. Who? Bairstow. I still think he'll land somewhere else. Okay. On a deal that's worth more than what Brisbane are willing mm -hmm. to pay or can pay now that they've signed Sobe and they're going to bring in another import or two. Um, but, yeah, it's been... I'm, I am a little surprised he hasn't been snapped I up thought he, I thought he was really good this year for Brisbane. Mm. What do you got? What, what's percolating? How many minutes per game do you believe... Nathan Sobey's going to play this season. On average, let's just say ballpark figure. What do you uh, think? Let's, let's say 30. 30. Okay. Who's his backup? Kadeem. Oh, Basically lost faith in him. If he's going to play 10 minutes a game, you're telling me? No, no. no I'm like saying the, the three is the three guard, of them. There's two guard, guard rotation. So essentially it's 80 minutes between the three of them. 30, 30, 20 maybe. Okay. Is we talking about Sobe here? We're talking about Kadee. Yeah. Where, where are we going? Last, time, no. last time you spoke about Kadee, all hell broke loose. But so it makes me a little but, nervous. Hey, hey, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you've got some reservations about Sobe's decision. Mm -hmm. You think he should have signed in Fe the Phoenix and I believe and so. Have helped build that team around him, especially if Creek wasn't going to be there. He mm. was going to be, isn't going to be there, which you think he won't. He would be the man. Cool. He's decided to go to Brisbane. What does that mean for Brisbane, though? They took a big step last season, two wooden spoons in a row made the playoffs. Now they bring Sobe in at the one. Kadee can play the backup, which we called for. We said, hey, he's an outstanding backup. Come in and microwave style, maybe light it up, blow a game, op blow a game open. Then they have, they say they get Lamar Patterson at the three, a legit import four. Matt Hodgson at the five. Look at the, they've got Ruben Tarangi, Mika Vakona, um, some nice pieces in their reserve unit. And on top of that, there's still two imports that did not get signed. They don't have... They, don't, they didn't... No, they, they have Lamar Patterson. But they won't go three imports. Well, they won't go with AJ Davis. But they won't I mean, go... Yeah, but, like, they have two slots. They will go four. Starting four. They'll get a starting They four. won't go three imports. Yeah. They have... I think they'll go three Yeah, I don't think they'll go three I think that Sobe is essentially... Sobe, yeah, yeah. I have no idea yeah, yep. what the money might have been on, but I highly doubt mm. that they're going to go three imports. Mm. But... And then you want to talk about your last couple of spots on that roster, like... They, what kind of a sell is that to some high-level college guys That's coming back to say, hey, you want to start get, playing under the, 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 um, national team coach. the national team coach? You want to learn from Mick of Akona and what might be his last, potentially, his last year in the league. He's on an expiring deal. How much does it take the sting out of South East Melbourne Phoenix? How disappointed do you think they would be? Because the rumour has been there for such a long period of time because Victorian boy, his friendship and teammateship, I guess, with Mitch Creek and... We put two and two together and you were pushing it for a long time as it being a good fit. Now they don't get him and they almost got sideswiped late because this whole Brisbane did. rumour didn't really fire up until the season is done and dusted. How much of the jam out of the South East Melbourne Phoenix donut do you think it has taken? It was a, it was a hit. Mm. It was a knockback. And, but I think they have bounced back admirably. Mm -hmm. The Ty Wesley signing I think is a really important piece and... Um, obviously, getting Gibbo. All right, well, he goes to Brisbane. Well, where's the squeeze? Let's quick, let's get Gibbo. There were other clubs. Melbourne United was one that was interested mm -hmm. in, in Adam Gibson, and um, a couple of other pieces that, that I'm pretty sure have put pen to paper with Southeast Melbourne Phoenix as well. So, I think they've bounced back well. 
Pretty sure? Yeah, I think there's there's been some of this sort of business going on. Okay, cool. <laughs> MBL.com.au to find out who that might be as soon as it breaks from the pen of Liam Santa Maria. We spoke a lot about Majuk Deng this year. You know, had an outstanding NBL Grand Final Series the previous season. In fact, there was a time where we thought if Adelaide th- win this, he might actually be the MVP of that Grand Final Series. He was that influential in some of those games. Didn't quite live up to it in the season just gone. We spoke about him needing a fresh start, and he's going to get it under Mike Kelly at the Cairns Tide Pans. What do you think of the move, boys? I think that it's, it's a great look for him. You know, he's on a two-plus-one deal. Mm-hmm. Gives him... Um, shows that the coaches and the organization believe in him. Yep. He can, you know, plant his feet in the sand, so to speak, and you know, let him know that he can feel like a. He's part of the DNA there. You know, he's part of the franchise. He's a franchise player there, as far as an, a, a local is concerned. But um, you know, this is just a, t- a place for him right now to just get his confidence back and get back balling. Period. I'll never forget Joey Wright go into a post-game press conference. I think it was maybe not last season, the season before. Remember when he had that blow-up game against the Wildcats mm-hmm. in Adelaide where he lit the, lit the joint up? And Joe Wright came into the press conference and said, this kid is a scoring machine. In a couple of years, I'm going to have trouble keeping him off the floor. Now, we know Joey Wright's eye for talent and he knows what makes a guy like... Now, he's got some work to do defensively, but he comes in as a legit scorer as a local for the Taipans, which they did not have last year, right? They just had, they had a bunch of role players and then it was all on Mello Trimble, DJ Newbel and Devin Hall, who didn't provide it, to have a guy come. It's a great pickup for them and it's, I think it's a really smart move from him. I flagged him late last season as a change of scenery guy, yeah. right? And yeah, what a did. Bit, and what better scenery than go up there to the tropics, the palm trees, a free-flowing system under Mike Kelly. He could blow up. Every club's been linked to Mellow Trimble almost in the last couple of weeks as well. Are they going to? Where do you think can sit when it comes to replacing some of those guys? You know, Devon Hall will probably be on the way out, but DJ Newbel is someone that would love to be a part of the program next year. That Mellow Trimble one's a big one though. Like everyone's linked to him. What are you hearing? It's going to be expensive. Mm. It's going to be expensive. As see, it as it should be. Yeah. And that's I mean, everyone like all those big clubs here want him. There's some big clubs over, overseas that are going to want him as well, but. Certainly, you know, all those, there's a bunch of clubs that are in the market for Casper Ware right now. Mm. And as you know, part you know of started that, <laughs> this guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so march him down the, high, down the road. Yeah. To South wow. They're keen. Yeah. So Melbourne United, be. Sydney Kings. Mm-hmm. Now, Mello Trimble is also in that mix. And I think, personally, I think Casper, if Casper and Mello are both in the league, I think they will most likely be at two of those spots and one of them will miss out (laughs) and go elsewhere. Here's what I believe. I believe Melo Tremble goes to Melbourne United. I believe Casper Ware signs with the Phoenix. They don't go to Sydney. Sydney is a scary situation. Wow. Go on. Sydney's a scary situation because... Yo, look, guys are going to be like, listen, it's a bogus team, so (laughs) I I may not want to rock with them. I'm telling you straight up. I don't know why it's so quiet here. (laughs) Would you say, if you got a chance, if you were, if, that's an interesting, who would you sign with right now? Would you sign with Sydney? Would you sign with Mel, oh, both of those Melbourne teams, one of those Melbourne teams, if you had an opportunity right now, today, who are you signing with? If I'm Casper Weir, I'm probably signing at Melbourne again due to the mm-hmm. fact that there's been a great deal of success. But I don't mm-hmm. think it's a scary proposition to go to Sydney because Andrew Bogut has seen okay. as the head honcho. I heard you. Mm-hmm. You said you signed back with, with a Melbourne team, right? It's a Casper mm-hmm. Weir thing. What would you do? <sighs> Find out who's going to cut the check. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> but if, it, if we're talking pure basketball... If, if all of them are going to cut the check you want, who are you signing with? Jeez. There you go. You ain't say sit. If you hesitating, you ain't saying sit. Yeah. But we're hesitating because it's a it's a hard decision. It's not because if it was an easy. How is it hard? They all cutting the same amount you want. Why is it hard? There's but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad option to go to and Sydney. The other thing is that I'm just saying, who are you? Who did you say you signed with? Well, I said Casper Ware at Melbourne because of the success and the familiarity. Who would you sign with? I would sign maybe at Sydney. I'd love to come off Andrew Bogut's screens and just jack bad 25 footers. Yeah, all right. <laughs> no, you won't. Miss a couple of them. Bogut gonna be like, my yeah, man, pass that ball. <laughs> That's pass that ball. 
you're going to go where it ain't Bogut. You'd rather go against Bogut than play with Bogut because you know Whoa. Bogut is going to be in your ASS. You just, know it, and I know it. Just when I thought wow, this you feud know just when I thought this feud was over. It ain't over. No, it's it's not, not a feud. I just asked, who would you rather play with? Did I, did I hear on a podcast that you do recently where it was suggested that Melo Trimble wanted to go to Adelaide and then it was knocked back? I never said it was knocked back. No. Somebody said it was between him and Randall. Okay. And obviously, the blue that Randall had with Joey Wright, people are like, it's not going to be Randall. It'll be... Uh, Trimble. Trimble. Yeah. So that's all it was. Okay, I didn't actually hear the podcast, so I just no, seen the transcript on, no. on the website. He's <laughs> playing a little table what are you doing? soccer. You right? I, I think a little that, table tennis. <laughs> I think the other thing is, as a point guard, you want to know who your five man's going to be. No doubt. Who are you? Who's going to be setting those picks and rolling to the rim? Now in Melbourne and South East Melbourne, you don't know that right yeah. now. So you want to have those conversations. In Sydney, there's an element of certainty knowing that that's going to be the bogeyman, and I think there would be some. You'd be pretty comfortable with that. Hell, Steph Curry, those guys can play with him. All right, how about this? So can I. How about this? What point guard was there already? How are those other point guards different than the point guard that was there? So are you going to, if you were in point, you're going to look at it, well, I play the same type of basketball Randall play. Yeah, but are we, are we, are we. So if it didn't work out with Randall, yeah, but I'm not taking what that do you, What do you mean by it didn't work out? This what do you didn't... mean? They got swept in the finals. So how did it work out? They didn't win. Doesn't it mean, like, who's to say that Randall won't be back? And, and, and Randall ain't coming back, man. <laughs> Come on, man. And Trimble, it didn't work. Trimble and Casper are different players to Randall. They were not. Randall operates in the mid range. scoring point guards. Man, I, Randall operates in the mid range. They I, are all scoring point I, guards. I, I Those dismiss. guys are at the rim or they're on the arc. I also, I also, I also dismiss the fact Bogan. that it didn't work. Like, I understand okay. they didn't win it, but I wouldn't say total was a How was their relationship? Bust. I wouldn't have. Not if great. you would watch no, on TV, what would you say? Not great. Mr. I cover all sports, so you know sport. Thank you. Okay? <laughs> if you were watching them on TV, okay, mm -hmm. how would you say that relationship was? I thought when they won six in a row, the perception of it was working well. This is the, this is the thing. The fact that they got swept is the perception the relationship didn't work. No, it's, no, it's, not. Not. No, it's not. It's not. It Jerome great. Randall has not been his best all season. You know it and I know Jerome it. Jerome Randall's first three months were really, really good. The relationship was not Thank great. you. Okay, so with knowing that, this is not a 30-team league. Everybody knows enough to see if a vibe is working up there right. or not. Right. All right? If I know I play pretty much the same style of play right. that you play and I play. We're scoring point guards. That's what it is. Oh, okay, so then two, two weeks ago. So if it didn't work with this guy with me, I'm like, well, with him, with Jerome Randall, I'm like, well, if I'm mellow, I'm like, you know what? Two other teams are offering me the same money. I'm going to roll the dice with one of those two, two, two other teams. Ago, though, That's you, all you, I'm saying. Two weeks ago, you were talking about the recruiting drive that Andrew Bogut's going to go on in the NBA and the, the, the talent of import we suggested or you suggested they might get. What's changed? I just said he's – If the, I'm just saying so what the options are. The NBL, you go grab Lee guys, yeah. So you think the guys within the NBL might be hesitant to play for the Kings, but guys from outside the NBL might – I just said if there's three options – and they're paying me the same amount of money. I'm going to go with one of the two Melbourne teams before I go up to Sydney. That's it. I think Casper Ware with the Kings is a seriously scary proposition so for the rest of the league. Mm -hmm. Listen, look at that defensive lineup. Where Defensive lineup. They got two players that's going to play D. That, that, that's the same team last year that was in dead last. So Lish, defensive player of the year. Where? How long ago was that? One of the... Uh, Lockdown perimeter defender. He's a lockdown defender. Okay. You have said where's the best two now, players? Now, he like is. But hold on, he is. Have a four man. They know what they didn't have last year in yeah. the four spot. They're going to have a four man who can play D. And they bring Draymond Green in, who's out of contract. <laughs> <'cause bogey laughs> oh, who knows what's going to happen? Here y'all go. Whew, <laughs> listen, Casper, I'm going. We're on that team. I'm going to either the Phoenix or I'm going to back. So you go to that's the unknown, the unknown Phoenix, happen. and obviously things will play out in the next couple of weeks, and we'll know maybe have a better idea. Although, to be honest, the Phoenix won't know about Mitch Creek until after summer league. You would assume, so that's going to be keeping it late as well. So you go mm -hmm. to the unknown Phoenix. I mean, obviously, it's going to be a conversation. I'm like, if you're going to want me, who are you going to get at the five? That's a conversation to have. For, mm -hmm. for full transparency, did you ever get that player relations gig you were trying to get when Tommy Greer was in here? <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you no. Okay, cool. Tommy Greer did hey, not get it to me. What we don't know about some of those players we just mentioned, we do know that Clint Steindl was, in fact, going to be the mm -hmm. Perth Wildcats again. Put pen to paper in the last couple of weeks, and really, when it's said and done, they had to really find themselves in 
a bidding war might be too dramatic, but there were at least mm -hmm. a couple other clubs, Liam Santa Maria, who were after this uh, sharp shoot. Yeah, well, it sort of seems like, you know, he's just re-signed, like a lot of guys do. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm off contract, but I was always going to re-sign and we got the deal, deal done. No, that's not how it went. Because actually, his position is one of a bit of scarcity in the free agent market this year. Um, a guy who can, you know, shoot like you did, 41% from three, 96% from the foul line. And I think he improved a lot defensively last season. And it seems like a lot of people did because, again, those big clubs were all keen. Melbourne United, Sydney Kings, um, certainly the South East Melbourne Phoenix. Again, like Sobey, I think it came down to um, the team he signed with and the Phoenix. And that's my understanding. And he went back to Perth. His wife has been playing for the Lynx, but my understanding is that she's not, you know, she's out of contract. I think they're looking to start a family. And I feel like that family vibe there with the Wildcats, a bunch of players there who have got kids and families and, and the like has been part of kind of keeping him around. What do you always say about families? I mean, you know, they got to eat. There you go. Families <laughs> got to eat. I'm glad that you Families remember gotta what you eat. said. <laughs> now, I have a quick question on Clint, Clint Steindl. Yeah. Who I remember when I first came back over here with the opportunity to, to join the broadcast team, this man was a, a lights out sniper when he played with the Crocs. Mm -hmm. All right. This year he was he wasn't there. He was not there. It was times he was there. Glimpses we saw him knocking down shots. Was he consistent this year? No. no. What? He wasn't consistent well, so early consistent. until Liam Santa Maria on this very show said, hey, he's got to play some more. And then he played really well when Perth got back on track and into the regular season as well as they did. And they spoke about being a mini final. And, this, and that's when he played his best. Now, his, mm. his semi final against Brisbane was not very good at all, but they did enough fairly comfortably to get through and, and swept the bullets there and get to a grand final series. In his grand final series, he had his moments mm. without playing at probably the level he had for the last six, games, uh, last six weeks of the regular season. Oh. I can understand your frust like there's an element of frustration with Clint Steindl. You, you look at him and you go, man, it, you're a forty percent shooter. But if you could be a forty percent three point shooter every game, yeah. if we can come to if you like you're JJ Reddick for us, you come mm. out and you can, we can bank in two for you know two triples a night at a good percentage. But sometimes he comes out and he's ice but, cold, and then other nights he goes five or you six know what and he, he wins you the game. You know what he does and what he did in the grand final series? Even though he wasn't shooting at forty one percent every night. You're still so wary of him defensively, yeah. and he still spaces the floor. He, does. he could be 0 of 8, and mm -hmm. you just can't leave him there. And yeah. defensively, the opposition coach and players are like, we just can't, you know, if someone else shoots an 0 and 8, you're like, let's just leave him down and see what happens. 100%. But Steindl, you cannot do it. And even without shooting the ball well, he still spaced the floor for them. And Trevor Gleason coaches him really well mm -hmm. because he says, when you come out there, let it fly. Just let it go. Never hesitate. Because the only way you're going to be valuable in that way in terms of gravity, in terms of keeping your defender and opening up the lane, is if they think you are ready to pull the trigger and you will never lose confidence. And I think that's part of why, you know, he feels comfortable there. He says, I know when I hit the floor, they're going to run some plays mm -hmm. for me. I'm going to get my looks. And if I catch fire, I'm off and roll. And the best thing about it, he doesn't hesitate. His conscience is yeah. diminished as time goes on. And it's fun to watch. So while he will stay... Sunday deck will move on. He'll end up at the Illawarra Hawks on a two-year deal. And, and reported, I think you might have mentioned it, that there was a two-year deal mm -hmm. on the table from the Perth Wildcats as well. But this mm. just reeks of, uh, hey, you know what? Clinton Steindl's staying. It might hurt my chances of playing playing time. Cotton, Martin, Norton. I want to go get on the court and play some ball. Minutes. Mm -hmm. Minutes and opportunity. Yep. And Glees with the championship ring. Having said that, he's leaving the Perth Wildcats. That's a big decision to make because if the Wildcats... No, no I understand his minutes. There's bit... <laughs> go ahead. Go on. Go, do it. What's wrong? <laughs> you want me to finish or you want to go? Go! Well, that's an incredible organisation. No doubt. And people love playing there. No doubt. Right? And if they're going to willing to... In <laughs> if they're going to invest in you... They're going to invest in you. Say, right. two years, we want to play you two years. All right, so the minutes aren't going to be easy to come by. Damien Martin's only just signed for one more yeah. year. He's getting much older. We don't know how long he's going to play. Um, there's going to be opportunities for you as you earn them and as you go. We're going to grow with you. That's a big decision to leave that club. It, it really is, but minutes right now seem to be on the offering, and that's, you know, wants to play ball. What is... What do you play this game to do? Sit the bench behind somebody that you're waiting for them to retire to play, or you play this game to play? Tell me. 
That's just what I want to hear. You go in the gym and put in all this work to sit the bench when you got an opportunity to play and it's a big decision? Of course not. Hey, I'm going to play. But yeah, it's, a it's nowhere case. near what as think, simple as that. What I think man. Liam is saying, and I do agree to a point, is that this is a quality organisation who have played the players for the last thousand years and have mm. just won another championship who weren't just offering him a development role or a one year. Now, I actually, I agree with Sunday Deck. I'd be like, I'm going to go play minutes here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave. It is a huge decision. But he's also, they're also like, we're phasing... Not phasing out. We know that Damian Martin's career is nearly done. We obviously bring Mitch Norton in to, to be a part of, you know, the the handover, but we're going to give you a two-year deal because we want to continue to help you grow as a player and be a part yeah. of the team. So that makes it the big decision. Wants to play minutes now and probably will do more so at Illawarra. No dramas with that, but that's why I think, and I agree, that it would have been a no, big decision for him. And I agree as well that um, I, with that it's the right move for him. Mm -hmm. I don't, it's not necessarily, like for instance, it's not necessarily the right move for everyone at that point to no. leave the Wildcats to go and play minutes. It, but he's ready. He's ready to go and play a chunk of minutes. But if he wasn't ready, because like this happens in the NBA all the time, where a guy comes in, he's, he's a, you know a, an incredible talent, and he comes to a I've got to word it properly, but he, he comes to a program that doesn't necessarily, you know, isn't firing on all cylinders, yeah. isn't helping him, and he plays a whole bunch of minutes, and three or four years later, he's out of the league, mm -hmm. and you go. Imagine if he had landed at the Spurs or imagine if he had landed at the Warriors and had a few years, three or four years and got into a program like that where he learnt what it takes to be yeah. a pro and how to work on your game and get that mentoring. Uh, what, what, could, what could he have become? You know what that's calling? Betting on yourself. I'm not going to stay in a safe zone. Yeah, Damian Martin leaves. I'll play a little bit more, but who's starting for the point guard when, when Damian Martin leaves? It's not. There you go. Mm. I'm going to be a backup. And then if I'll play a little bit of minutes, but maybe I don't. And guess when Mitch Norton comes out, who slides to the point? Bryce Cotton. I'm betting on myself. I hope he bets on himself and does well. And that's exactly what he do. That's what you got to do. Yeah. He's, and he's a good talent. You know he's I mean? versatile. Because he's actually not a point guard. He can play minutes at the point, and he did that for them at, at a pinch, but he's going to be better on the wings. Sam Froling's had a really good start to the NBL 1 season as well. Of course, a name Sam, well right. known in the Froling's NBL Froling's little brother. Mm -hmm. And who is legit. Keep going, though. <laughs> Where should he go? <laughs> to the league. To the, yeah, which team? If we look at some of the highlights of him here, playing well for Dan Inong, who've had a really good start to the year and have gone young, and he is leading this yep. young court to an undefeated start. Where should he go? Well, so one year at Creighton, yeah, right, and one freshman year, and it wasn't working out for him. Do you know where he needs to go? Talk to me. He needs to go somewhere where he can play minutes. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> Cairns Taipans would be great. Maybe oh, the Taipans. That is the hot word. There you go. Yo, you know what? Shout out to Mogul Sports Group. These guys are oh. signing all the players. <laughs> They signed all of this. But you know what? This is the Illawarra next drop. Needs, Illawarra needs to get into that game as well. <laughs> I can't believe we're shouting out sports groups now. Yo, I'm just <laughs> telling you. Hey, I'm hey telling you. shout out to the managers. You're all doing a great job. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. Where are the Hawks? Because the Hawks need yeah. to be in that game. They do. He is the perfect guy to go he to is. Illawarra and play there. What have they got? AJ Ogilvy. Mm -hmm. And you saw Dan Greeter and Emmett Nah last, yep. Ye last yep. year. Play minutes. Who I love both of them. Hey. Yeah. Imagine the minutes he's going to play at Illawarra. They need to be coming to that party. But it looks like Cairns beat him, though, doesn't well, it? Well, it's not over. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. OK. Hey, on the free agents board, there's still some players that have got the names up there as well. I think we've got the list there. It is. Here we go. Yeah, best, yeah. of course, we touched on. Craig Muller, we mentioned as well. Rob Lowe, who looks like, well, he's going back to New Zealand for family reasons. Do we expect the breakers just to sign? Yep, OK, yeah. thank you, Liam. <laughs> <Kyle> <laughs> and Dane Pinot, two Victorian boys who've been heavily linked to the Phoenix. What do you make of this list and where do you expect some of these guys to end up? Let me touch on Craig Moller and I'll leave the, other, the last two to you guys. Mm -hmm. um, Moller. <laughs> Sydney's in the game with Craig Moller. Yep. Sydney's well and truly in uh, negotiations with Moller as he looks to get a better opportunity elsewhere. OK. Anything, Kerry? I got nothing. All right, I'll, uh, I'll take a swing at this. I think Kyle Adnan will stay at Sydney, and I think Dan Pinot will be at South East Melbourne Phoenix. But we'll see what happens over the next couple of weeks. I think Mola have an op Interesting with the Sunday deck conversation, similar, I think, with Craig Mola, that he is looking for an opportunity mm -hmm. to maybe play some more minutes or have a, a bit of an enhanced role. Now, of course, had a really good year, but 
played his best basketball when Casey Prather was out injured mm -hmm. and started some games when Carrick Felix was coming off the bench when he came in as the replacement. And last year, DJ Kennedy, when he started to get going, took away the minutes for Craig Mollett. So I think that Craig Mollett will be looking for an opportunity. He's playing for... Are they, called, are they called Hobart in the uh, New Zealand Basketball Southern. League? That's Southern, sorry, the Southern Huskies, yeah. So he's playing for them, so another opportunity to develop mm. some more after his big year in the SABL. Mm. So that's where I look there, and I think Rob Lowe, the break is, as you touched on. The Kate, Kyle Adnam one is an interesting situation mm. given what's happened with Tom Wilson. Right? Did you, just, you might have just mentioned that just then. I haven't um, yet. I'm no, but... That for last. Yeah, OK, well, given that he's not there, right, I mean, what, what happens... Who's not where? <laughs> Tom Wilson's gone to, the, to play cannot, footy. You cannot be surprised. Tom this. Wilson is going to play footy. Yes. Oh, you know the biggest surprise about this is it's breaking news in the last 24 hours, and I said it every week on overtime since I don't know November nine. Mm. Why did he go play? Okay, let's so, talk about. So here's this. what happened. Here's what happened. Um, he wasn't sure and didn't and about making the decision. Mm -hmm. So uh, Sydney said, "All right, cool. Let's do this. Let's." We didn't. They didn't take up his option, mm -hmm. but they said, "Let's let's." Let's give you, buy you a little bit more time, but we don't want you to go out there and sign with another NBL team. Here's a long-term deal. Here's a new long-term deal. You'll be a Sydney King. You're going to play under Will Weaver. It's going to be great. We're going to put in an AFL out for a period of time, buy you a few more weeks to make the decision. He made it. Gold Coast, Collingwood and Geelong. He's had some links to Geelong where he had a little bit of rehab. Did a little bit of some rehab last year when he had a minor knee injury. So he hasn't yet played in the NBL 1 this year. And that was, a, I guess, part of that decision-making process that you just spoke about. So he'll make a decision, I guess, in the next couple of weeks as in what AFL club goes. He'll be signed as a Category B rookie, which means if you haven't played competitive football or been registered as a footballer in the last three years, then you can sign as a Category B rookie, which is, in fact, outside the salary cap in the AFL, and that's how Mason Cox ended up at the Collingwood Football Club and how a couple of footballers mm -hmm. in recent times. Tom Fulton did Yeah, Tom, uh, Joel Smith as well mm -hmm. at the Melbourne Footy Club. So that's where Tom Wilson is headed. So when you sign this category specific B Category yep. B rookie, do mm -hmm. you play like VFL? Play VFL, you're on the list. You but can you, be promoted. And, you can and be called up, but you're in the minor leagues for this season. Well, yeah, yeah. so he'll play. He, he won't play. If he, wherever he goes, Gold Coast, Collingwood or... Or, or Geelong. Uh, Geelong. He won't play AFL. He won't have the opportunity to play AFL this particular year. And I don't think anyone would expect him just to wander in and play. Mm. Two of those teams are actually really good in the blinds. Yeah, teams. they actually are. Mm -hmm. um, now, when, he, does he just have a one-year deal or is it like a... No, it's a, it's a long-term thing. A Not long dissimilar, term. actually, to what Sydney Kings might have said to him with, with, with him. Oh, but that would so be the two, same three, Yeah, AFL, so the Category B rookie, it be. might be a three-year thing because gotcha. you are getting a guy, traditionally, who hasn't played much footy, you got to teach him. You got to develop him. Gotcha. Got got yeah, it's the basketball stealing yeah. rule. It's basically what it is, and it's you know it's yeah. like the two-way deal with the G League. They see all these, um, you know, leagues across the world taking all these players away from right there in their backyard, and they say, "Oh, let's work out a rule to yeah. help keep these guys around." Well, they put on. in a rule right. to help. Pull these guys across. Also, he played on the 16s, I think, in Sandringham Dragons with a couple of players. One, Jacob Wiedering, who plays at the Blues and was a number one pick. So he's been around some of these kids, and from all reports, he's an extremely good footballer. And as disappointing as it is, and I actually like the fact Basketball Australia might have tried to help him with the decision and, and got him into the boomers. We actually played quite well mm -hmm. in those Asian oh, Cup games a, a couple of weeks ago. Disappointing for the basketball fraternity, but good luck to the young fella. Mm. So it'll be interesting to see what they do in the backcourt, in mm. the in the reserve spots. Um, I would be surprised if Kyle Adnam was back there. Okay. But there's going to be a couple of reserves there, so we'll see who it is. Mm. Sean Bruce, maybe? He could be mm -hmm. a guy they might be looking at. What do you think Adelaide is going to do? Because right now, you know, their roster is... It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Mm -hmm. It's not that... Because, look, yes. okay. Yes. It's not that bad. Mm. At the five, they got DJ. Yes. Yep. Okay? Good they start. still got Frawling. Unless he gets drafted. Yep. They got, they got Frawling, right? right? Right. Wiley at the four. Mm -hmm. Maybe they bring back Ramon Moore. Well, they've got Ramon they got Moore. Oh, they had a, it's a multi-year deal he was on. Yep. They picked up his okay. option. Yep. There you go. Ramon Moore at the three. So, at the five... Oh, four, Ramon Moore at the two. Drimmick at the, at the two. three. Drimmick at the, th at the three. In like, point one. Get an import one. That's, That's a legit squad. five. It is. Then you got the energy guy he, who's still there. McVeigh. McVeigh, the energy yeah. guy. McTray. You know what I mean? McTray. Mm -hmm. You can just... And, uh, oh, Doyle is gone, right? They didn't pick up his option. Okay, but... That's six. All you need is four more. <laughs> For five, but yeah. Yeah. Two more... Imp one yeah. more import. The point guard import and, who and another the one. the team? 
Joey Wright and his, his teams, they usually do good. So don't don't, don't sleep don't, on Joey Wright. And don't panic. If don't you're panic. If you're a fan and you lost Sobi, you lost Majuk Ding, okay. Move, some things happen. Yeah. Joey Wright's going to find some guys. He's going to bring in one or two. Now remember, a few years ago, Majuk Ding, Anthony Drimmick. Pick those guys up. He, Nathan Sobey, one year out of the University of Wyoming. Mm. One year with Kent, picked him up, brought him in. Then last year, Froling and McVeigh, he's going to find another couple of these guys. There are still a couple of names that are going to jump out, like Sam Froling has just jumped out yeah. in the last couple of weeks. There's another couple of names that are going to jump out soon in terms of underclassmen yep. who I think are going to turn pro. Mm. So, and, I, and he's, who's, nobody does that better. Nobody terms, does that better. Up. Don't sleep. And yeah, just quickly, you're not, you're not, oh, now, man. You're not managing Joey Wright, are you? I'm not managing Joey you, Wright, but I know his media, manager. I, 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 don't, I don't at all diminish how great <laughs> Joey Wright is as a coach, but your, your social media love for Joey Wright in the last week has gone to a new level. Which no, I let, me tell, let me tell you what happened. I saw um, Sobe. Nathan Sobey's response. Well, not response, but his, his, thank, his, you his thank you message. Mm. And there was so many critics saying, oh, he could have done better or... Joey Wright did bad by him. It was just a lot of mixed emotional yeah. responses from the fans. So I'm just like, why are people acting like everybody wanted Sobe when Sobe first came back? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm with you. Nobody else wanted him or gave him the platform and developed him the way Joey Wright gave him that platform. Fake you got to respect that, man. On that note, we're done. Hashtag NBL Overtime to get involved. Hashtag NBL 20, of course. Hashtag see incredible. And a big shout out to the, what is it, the Mogul Sports Group? You listen, yeah. Jai Watson, I love your work. <laughs> On that note, Goodness, man. <laughs> listen, wow, I love his work. Right. See you next week. <laughs> the baby, the baby, uh, Frawling's son, Frawling's brother. He did. He got him. <laughs> oh, no.